What do you make of the Raptors taking Barnes at four? I loved it. Uh, I'd been reporting really since the lottery that this was a strong possibility. And I think that for the average fan, you see Jalen Suggs and what he does at Gonzaga all year and the big shot that he hits in the NCAA tournament and all of that stuff. And it just all comes together like this is the no-brainer pick. Meanwhile, Scotty Barnes is coming off the bench uh, as a six eight strange point guard at Florida State doesn't have that exposure that Jalen Suggs does and and I, I get all of that but in the NBA when you have a guy that is six eight with a seven three wingspan that legitimately because he did it in college can guard positions one through five has a point guard mentality in the way that he approaches the game has the athleticism that Scotty Barnes does. Those guys just don't come along very often. They are uh, unicorns in the NBA, and he has weaknesses. He's not a great shooter, but, you know, it's interesting. I didn't really hear anybody in Toronto or anywhere else complain about the fact that uh, that Jalen Suggs was also a very streaky shooter um, at Gonzaga and was not a great shooter in high school. It's There's some, some concerns with Scotty Barnes, but the upside – in my opinion, was as high as anybody in this draft. Hmm. And I don't think Masai wants to be in the lottery a lot. I don't think that's his goal. And so if you're up here at four and you're able to draft a guy that, frankly, on pure upside, I'm not saying he's as good as these players, but pure upside could be the, the best player in this draft, you take that swing. Do you think his upside was higher in the end than Suggs? Ceiling, I guess, better word. Oh, yeah, he absolutely is ceiling higher than Suggs. Now, here's the other side of it. The other argument is Suggs' floor is higher than Scotty Barnes's. Hmm. Uh, I I think Suggs is going to be a fantastic player. I I, I would have been fine if the Raptors would have drafted him at four. But I definitely think, again, I don't think the Raptors have any designs right now to be like Oklahoma City and, you know, sit in the and try to win the number one pick over the next two or three years and, and load up on high lottery picks. You're here once. Try to take the guy that could be, you know, a five time all star someday. And you take the risk. It's a risk. Uh, but, you know, I've known Messiah a long time, you know, back when he was a scout in the NBA. And the thing that I'll say about him was he was never afraid to take risks. He believes in himself, believes in his scouting. And and he saw what a lot of other NBA teams saw. This, he was not alone in having Scotty Barnes four on his board, and some teams had him at three. Well, that's interesting. We're chatting with Chad Ford, and and that's what people want to hear. I mean, this is a, a Raptors team that has not been in this position for a long time, Chad, as you know. I mean, the last time they picked fourth overall was, was the Bosch draft in 03. The last time they picked this high was when they took Bargnani. <laughs> so it, it's, I guess from that standpoint, there's some pressure that comes with it because it's uncharted territory. But also when you consider where the team is, where I think they're hoping to reset, uh, they're going to have some movement over the course of the offseason, but the hope is they can get back into a playoff picture next year. Can you see Scotty Barnes factoring in to this upcoming season at all for the Raptors? I, I think so. I, I don't think they drafted him at four to send him to the G League and not have him be part of his, you know, part of this team. And I think he'll he'll be able to play right now defensively. I mean, the one the one hardest thing for rookies is that they usually get torched on the defensive end. It's a big big upgrade. But I really think Scotty Barnes is one of the two or three best defenders in this draft. He has all the physical tools to do it. He has the intelligence to be able to do it. And, and I think that he'll be able to stay on the floor. I think what Raptors fans are going to have to be patient with is figuring out the offense stuff for him. Uh, I think that is going to take longer. I think it's going to be partly what the Raptors decide to do with him. You know, the, the blessing of having a guy who can play five positions on offense and defense is the versatility. The curse is at some point you got to develop them. And how are you going to develop them? And what, what particular skills are you going to ask them to use? And I, I think the Raptors are going to have to work with him to decide, how are we going to deploy you? Are we going to use you as a point guard? He played point guard at Florida State. I know everybody says 6'8", 7'3", wingspan. He's not a point guard. He, he absolutely could be a starting point guard in the NBA. But that's not the only position he could play. And so you might decide you want to use him as a wing. You might decide you even want to use him as a power forward in the NBA. He could do all of those things. And so I think that that is the thing that 
you're going to have to develop. You're going to have to work on the jump shot. It's going to take some work. It's it's not there yet, but he's a hard worker. The Florida State Florida State staff raved about this young man and who he was as a person. His teammates raved about him. He's got an infectious personality. Uh, he's a, both a winner but an optimist, uh, just a happy guy to be around. I think Raptors fans are going to fall in love with him. Chad, you mentioned the jump shot. Where do you stand on teams that say, we can teach that? Like, we can we can develop that. And obviously, we've seen it in Toronto. Like, do you think that's a reasonable assumption to make, that that's something you can push along to a, a viable level? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Does it work every time? No. There's some some players that never get it. And in a few weird cases, like Ben Simmons, there's almost like a regression. Uh, ben Simmons almost seems worse now, and I think there is some psychology to shooting, and that that's part of it as well. But Scotty wasn't a bad shooter in high school. He wasn't a very good shooter at Florida State. He didn't take a lot of jump shots, but when he did, they weren't great. And, and I absolutely think that if you look over the history of prospects, that is something that you can teach. You can't teach 6'8", 7'3", wingspan, the athleticism to guard all those positions, uh, the ability to see the game and feel the game the way Scotty Barnes shooting you can teach. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that he's going to be a lights-out shooter. I know the Raptors will work on it. They have a great development. But if Scotty Barnes can't shoot, let's say that he is a career 27 or 28% three-point shooter, he is still going to be a valuable player in this league because of his ability to defend all those positions and how switchable he is. Uh, the ball handler, the creator, all of that other stuff. The game is not just about shooting or scoring. But if he gets up to 34, 35, 36% three-point shooting, that's when you start talking about that scary high ceiling that Scotty Barnes has where people are going to be looking at this draft like the Giannis draft and saying, oh, my mm -hmm. gosh, how did this guy slide to four?